Hi, it's Martin Perhiniak. Welcome back to PSD Touch Plus. Today I'm going to show you a very interesting technique how to change the face of a person on a photograph. I'm going to use two different photos and I'm going to replace the face of a person with the face of another person from another photograph. So as you can see this is the final result and it's not perfect but quite believable and if I show you the original then you will be probably surprised so that was the original photograph and this was the other photograph which I used and merging the face from this photograph on the left with the head of the other person here on the right we will get the result which you, sh which you saw like that so the person's face from the left with the other person's head on the right. So once again, before and after. As you can see, I use a couple of different things here. First of all, I use the selection and I use the mask. Then I use Puppet Warp as a smart filter. And I also use the Curves Adjustment layer. Now, if I double click on the Puppet Warp uh, feature, you can see I made lots of little changes, uh, distortion on the face, to be able to adjust it onto the other person's face or head. Now, if I go back and uh, just accept these changes and go back and turn off this Puppet Warp, you can see that even though the face is similar, still it doesn't really work because it won't follow the structure of the head. So the Puppet Warp is used to follow the head's structure and the adjustment layer is to adjust the colors. As you can see before uh, from the other photograph these were the colors and then I change it to adjust it to this uh, photograph or this skin color. Now let me try to replicate this so do it once more from scratch. So I'm going to select uh, the lasso tool and I'm just going to create a quick selection of this person here on the left. So I make a quick selection. I don't need the hair part, just the face like this. And select and copy it onto a separate layer, Command J or Control J. Now that we have this layer, we can close the other layer and we are going to continue working with this one. I'm using the free transform tool and I'm going to make the face bigger and I'm trying to adjust the size so roughly something like this I think will be the best to use and then I'm going to put this face over the other person's head so now if I turn it on and off you can see there's a big uh, difference between the two faces at the moment but we are going to work on that First of all, I would like to use the free transform tool again and use the command or control click to change a bit the perspective of the face, something like this. Let's see again before and after, it's getting better. There's a slight tilt in the head, so I'm going to follow that tilt as well. Maybe I'll move it up a bit, something like this. Let's see again before, after. Now we are getting closer. And now all I need to do is to add a mask. So I'm going to select this layer and add a mask on it. And then I'm going to use the brush tool and set the opacity somewhere around 60 and the black color, soft edges. And I'm going to start blending the edges like here where the hair is and the forehead. And then I'm going here at the bottom. I blend it in nicely on the edges and I think that's all what we need so we already have a quite good starting point let's see before and after yep here around the hair we still need a bit of work and maybe here as well so we are getting there but as you can see the eyes are not really in place the forehead is too high and the eyes turned a bit too close to the right so we need to move them a little bit to the left all together with the nose and probably the lips as well so you can see the other face uh, structure so now before i go any further i'm going to turn this layer into a smart object 
Sometimes it's good to have the layer mask inside the smart object embedded into the smart object, but sometimes I prefer to have it uh, outside. So turn the layer in the smart object and then add the mask onto it. In these cases, what I usually do is I just simply create a new layer, an empty new layer, drag the mask onto that, select the layer which I was working on and convert that into a smart object and then later add the mask back from the empty layer and then we can delete the empty layer. So now we have a bit more control over uh, how we mask the face while we can also add the puppet warp feature under edit puppet warp and here we can define the most important points like the eyes, the nose, the lips, the chin and probably the jaw bones as well we might need those to move around and maybe here also the eyebrows and the top of the nose probably so these are the most important points and now if I turn the opacity down we can see there's quite a big difference uh, between the two faces so let me just zoom closer it's almost like plastic surgery so now we can move these points around a bit okay just to align it to the other face structure and sometimes if you move them too much uh, the person that you are editing might look completely different which might be the case as well at the moment when I'm doing this so I'm going to press enter and let's just see the face it's not that bad actually so let's just see without the puppet warp and with the puppet warp so now the face is in place probably the eyes look a bit weird so I double click on puppet warp and I'm going to drag them down a bit so that distortion was probably a bit too much press enter to accept the change and once again the left eye looks a bit weird so I'm going to just adjust it a bit more yeah let's see now the face before and after and let's see also without the puppet warp and with the puppet warp so it's not bad it's getting there I'm going to click on puppet warp and I'm going to adjust the edge of the face in a couple of points just to have again a better following line maybe here as well it's almost like adjusting a curve uh, to follow the face so let's see again without puppet warp and with the puppet warp now I'm going to select the mask and I'm going to adjust it more here on the hair so make sure there's no overlap on the hair and maybe here as well on the edge no overlap over there and at the bottom around the chin we can wait a bit after we do the adjustments and then finalize the, the treatment there so as you can see now we have quite a good change already for the face but we still need to adjust the colors for that I'm going to use an adjustment layer called curves and I'm going to alt click between the curves adjustment layer and the layer which we were working on to clip it together so that's a clipping mask and I want to darken the overall layer a bit so I'll make it a bit darker something like that and then I switch to the red channel and I'm going to add a little bit more red to the face just a slight change so let's just see now without the adjustment and with the adjustment so it's already much better all I need to do now is here and at the bottom I need to uh, just smooth out the lines so I'm going to use a brush and I'm going to start hiding a couple of uh, parts here so just blend it more into the other photograph so here as well actually here I need to show more unfortunately we don't have more beard from the other image so we need to be able to work with this what we have here I'm going to use the other chin line like that and maybe if I want to be more precise I can zoom a bit closer and just on a separate layer I'm going to create a separate layer on this one I can use colors from that part and just simply use the brush tool 
and draw it over a bit just add a bit more contour so add a bit more uh, beard here by just simply drawing over it that will help the illusion as well just to connect it a bit more together the two layers so something like that let me show you this without that little adjustment you can see it helps actually uh, to make it more believable so now let's see before and after let's see the face the original face I turn these off and the adjusted image and let's see that without the puppet warp adjustment so you can see the puppet warp helped quite a lot and also the color adjustment helped a lot and that little adjustment there with the brush tool also helped for the final version the great thing is that we work completely non-destructively so everything can be changed we have a smart object for the face uh, which means that the puppet warp is uh, non-destructive I can always go back double click on it and adjust these little pinpoints uh, the adjustment layer is also editable, editable so I can turn it on and off or go double click and then go back to the changes I've done and the brush strokes are also in a separate layer so that's all of what I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And I also hope that you will join me next time to learn more techniques and shortcuts. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time.